the White House, the residence of the President of the United States has long been known as a place of power and intrigue. With its rich history and prominent place in American culture, it's not surprising that many stories of paranormal encounters have emerged over the years. Today, we will explore some of the most fascinating and chilling tales of presidents and their encounters with the paranormal. Abraham Lincoln is perhaps the most famous president associated with the paranormal. According to reports, Lincoln himself saw the ghost of his deceased son, Willie, who died during his presidency in the White House. Abraham Lincoln was shattered by the death of his son, Willie, who succumbed to typhoid fever in 1862 at the age of 11, after he reportedly received regular visits from his son. The Grant administration also reported sightings of Willie in the 1870s. Mary Lincoln also claimed that the spirits of her deceased sons took actual ghost form and manifested in her White House bedroom. She wrote to her sister Emily about this, saying, He comes to me every night and stands at the foot of my bed with the same sweet, adorable smile that he always had. He does not always come alone. Little Eddie is sometimes with him. First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln who believed strongly in spirits, reportedly held seances in the White House to communicate with her dead sons. After one seance, she told her friends that she heard the ghost of Andrew Jackson stomping and swearing throughout the White House. There are also reports of Mary hearing Thomas Jefferson playing his violin. She did this both while Lincoln was president and after he was assassinated. There's also reportedly a picture of Lincoln with Mary after he died. But what exactly did old Honest Abe encounter himself? Lincoln had several encounters with the ghost of his predecessor, President Andrew Jackson. The ghostly figure of Jackson appeared several times to Lincoln, warning him of impending danger and giving him advice on how to govern the country. I mean, unsolicited advice. Nobody likes that, Andy. Lincoln also reportedly saw the ghostly figure of a Civil War soldier while visiting a military hospital during the Civil War. The ghostly soldier reached out its hand to Lincoln who was so unnerved by the experience that he immediately left the hospital. But did you know that Lincoln also had several premonitions or prophetic dreams? Perhaps the most famous of Lincoln's premonitions was where he saw himself lying in state in the East Room of the White House. He even told his wife and friends about the dream and how vividly real it had felt. He described seeing a guard standing near his body and hearing people weeping. The dream became a reality just a few days later when John Wilkes Booth assassinated President Lincoln. Before the Battle of Gettysburg, Lincoln reportedly told a friend that he had had a dream in which he heard the sounds of battle and saw the casualties of war. However, he also saw a vision of victory and believed that the Union would emerge victorious. The dream turned out to be prophetic as the Union did in fact win the battle and dealt a severe blow to the Confederacy. In yet another dream, Lincoln saw a ship sailing to an unknown destination, which sank and everyone drowned. The next day, he received news of a major military loss at sea. So maybe there's something to these dreams, right? The ghost of Lincoln himself is, in fact, the most seen ghost at the White House. Many presidents and visitors have claimed to see the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Most famously, Dwight Eisenhower, Theodore Roosevelt and Herbert Hoover, along with former First Ladies Eleanor Roosevelt, Jackie Kennedy, and Lady Bird Johnson, are just a few of the residents that claim to have seen Lincoln's apparition. Eisenhower revered the 16th president and kept a set of Lincoln's collected works in the Oval Office and had a painted portrait of Lincoln hung in the cabinet room. During his time in office, President Eisenhower made no effort to deny the experiences he had with the ghost of President Abraham Lincoln. He told his press secretary, James Haggerty, that he frequently sensed Lincoln's ghost. One day, he explained that he was walking down the hallway and the ghost of Abraham Lincoln approached from the opposite direction. Eisenhower took the encounter in stride. After the horrors of war, the specter of Lincoln was probably a welcome sight. President Andrew Jackson is another ghost frequently seen at the White House. His swearing and guttural laugh has echoed through the walls of the White House since the 1860s, supposedly emanating from his old bed in the Queen's Room, which is also known as the Rose Room. But let's take a moment to talk about an encounter that supposedly happened to Jackson while he was alive. Did you know that Andrew Jackson may be considered the nation's first presidential ghost hunter? I didn't know this. 
Legend has it that the Bell Witch had an encounter with the then future president, Andrew Jackson. Jackson owned property on the Red River and had heard about the happenings on the Bell Farm. And so he wanted to visit after hearing the stories. He gathered up some men and went out. One of the wagons got stuck by an unseen force and would not move despite whipping the horses, examining the wheel, and having the men in his party try to push it. He exclaimed, by the eternal boys, this is the witch. To which the witch replied, All right, General, let the wagon move on. I will see you tonight. The wagon continued of its own accord, and then they continued on their journey. That evening, a self-proclaimed witch layer or witch hunter said he had a silver bullet and regaled the men with tales of witch hunting. Jackson whispered to a colleague, I'll bet this fellow is an arrant coward. By the Eternals, I do wish this thing would come. I want to see him run. After which, silence followed. Suddenly, there was the sound of light footsteps prancing, and the voice stated, All right, General, I am on hand and ready for business. The witch bade the witch hunter to shoot the gun, but it wouldn't fire. The hunter was struck by an unseen force, claiming to feel the pain of being stuck by needles, exclaimed he had been grabbed by the nose, and fled from the tent. The witch exclaimed, How the devil did run and beg. I'll bet he won't come through here again with his old horse pistol to shoot me. I guess that's fun enough for tonight, General, and you can go to bed now. I will come again tomorrow night and show you another rascal in this crowd. Jackson was eager to stay, but the party had had enough and shortly Jackson returned to Nashville. Did you know Andrew Jackson also has a haunted hotel in the French Quarter in New Orleans that is named after him? Many guests have claimed to spot the ghost of Andrew Jackson parading around the halls of the hotel. But of course, it begs the question, why? After all, Andrew Jackson didn't die in the hotel. But it seems that Andy likes to be seen. And who's to say what makes ghosts do the things they do? Another common ghost sighting in the Andrew Jackson Hotel by both guests and employees is that of a woman who appears to be straightening up the rooms, fluffing the pillows, and is even suspected of rearranging the furniture. While some say it's a former housekeeper of the hotel, many think she is the caretaker of five young orphan boys who died and are also ghosts seen at the same hotel, and that she's still watching over them and keeping things tidy. She's been spotted in several rooms and in the hotel lobby. Now, I myself went to the French Quarter in New Orleans and took a picture of the Andrew Jackson Hotel, and I didn't notice until after I had gone back to my room that one of the windows in the second floor of the Andrew Jackson Hotel seems to show the ghostly figure of a woman. I didn't know anything about the story of this woman until later. So take a look and let me know in the comments down below what do you think you see in the window. Is it the ghostly figure of the woman? Franklin D. Roosevelt, who served as American president during some of the most tumultuous years in American history, also had many paranormal encounters. However, one of the most famous paranormal encounters that happened during his presidency involves British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Churchill allegedly saw the ghost of Abraham Lincoln while staying at the White House. According to reports, Churchill had just stepped out of a hot bath in the Lincoln bedroom wearing nothing but a cigar, maybe a smile, when he encountered Lincoln by the fireplace. Now Churchill, with his characteristic wit and charm, remarked to the apparition of President Lincoln, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. I think that's maybe the best line to a ghost ever. However, Churchill was reportedly so unnerved by this experience, even though he seemed to handle it quite well, he never wanted to stay in the Lincoln bedroom again. Harry Truman served as president after Franklin Roosevelt, and he had numerous paranormal encounters. He claimed to have heard strange noises and footsteps, and also saw the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. He also claimed that he once saw the ghost of a former White House employee who was said to have died in the building. In a letter to his wife, Bess Truman, Harry wrote about some of his paranormal experiences at the White House. In his letter on June 12, 1945, Dear Bess, just two months ago today, I was reasonably happy and contented vice president. Maybe you can remember that far back too, but things have changed so much it hardly seems real. I sit here in this old house and work on foreign affairs, read reports and work on speeches, all the while listening to the ghosts walk up and down the hallway and even right here in the study. The floors pop and the drapes move back and forth. 
I can just imagine old Andy and Teddy having an argument over Franklin, or James Buchanan and Franklin Pierce deciding which was the more useless to the country. And when Millard Fillmore and Chester Arthur join in for place and show, the din is almost unbearable, but I still get some work done. And in a letter to his daughter Margaret, Truman wrote, I'm sure they're here, and I'm not so much alarmed at meeting up with any of them. I'm sure old Andy could give me good advice and teach me good swear words. And I'm sure old Grover Cleveland could tell me some choice remarks to make to some political leaders. So I won't lock my doors or bar them if any of the old coots in the pictures out in the hall want to come out of their frames for a friendly chat. Truman's most famous encounter happened in the Lincoln bedroom. One night in 1946, President Truman went to bed around 9 p.m. About six hours later, he heard it. Knock, knock, knock. The sound against his bedroom door awakened him. He wrote to his wife in a letter archived in the Presidential Library and Museum. I jumped up and put on my bathrobe, opened the door, and no one there. Went out and looked up and down the hall, looked in your room and Margie's. Still no one. Went back to bed after locking the doors and there were footsteps in your room whose door I'd left open. Jumped and looked and no one there. The damn place is haunted, sure as shooting. Secret Service said not even a watchman was up here at that hour. You and Margie had better come back and protect me before some of these ghosts carry me off. These are just a few examples of some of the many paranormal encounters that Truman claimed to have while at the White House. While some may dismiss these claims, Truman himself insisted they were real and that they had a significant impact on his presidency. Ronald Reagan, one of the most beloved presidents of the modern era, also had some paranormal experiences at the White House. In a 1981 interview, Reagan revealed that he had seen a ghostly figure in the Lincoln bedroom. According to Reagan, the figure was a very handsome man who was standing at the window and looking at the Washington Monument. And in a 1987 New York Times article, Ronald Reagan commented that his dog Rex would go into any of the rooms in the White House except for the Lincoln bedroom. He said he'd just stand outside the door and bark. The late president even mentioned Lincoln's ghost in a 1987 press conference. He told reporters who were gathered that he was never frightened by the spirit. I haven't seen him myself, Reagan said, but every once in a while our little dog Rex will start down that long hall just glaring as though he's seeing something. He also again added that Rex wouldn't go into the Lincoln bedroom but would simply bark. Reagan even said that if he opened the door and tried to get Rex to come in, the dog refused to do so. Now, presidents aren't the only ghosts that are seen at the White House. Both presidents Ulysses S. Grant and Chester Arthur have spotted lesser-known apparitions such as the white-haired man. An 1883 article in the Washington Critic described the ghost who haunts the second floor bedrooms as an aged and bent man with a long phosphorescent white beard and hair, ghastly and wavy, bright and glaring eyes and long scrawny fingers. His walk is noiseless but stately and his presence is always indicated by a peculiar electric sensation which pervades the surrounding air. Hmm. Anna Surratt bangs on the doors of the White House every July 6th pleading to see President Andrew Johnson. When she was alive, Anna was there to beg for the pardon of her mother, Mary Surratt, who was accused of being a conspirator in Lincoln's assassination after allowing John Wilkes Booth to stay at her boarding house. Anna's pleas fell on deaf ears and her mother became the first female executed by the American government. In her death, Anna continues to knock on the doors begging for her mother's life. Now let's explore some of the first ladies and their paranormal encounters, or their encounters being the paranormal. The wife of the second president of the United States, Abigail Adams, is said to haunt the East Room of the White House. The ghost of Abigail Adams was first reported by Grace Coolidge, the wife of President Calvin Coolidge, who said that she saw the ghost of a woman in colonial dress carrying a tray of laundry. Since then, many other visitors have also reported seeing the ghost of Abigail Adams. The wife of President James Madison, Dolly Madison, is said to haunt the Rose Garden of the White House. The ghost of Dolly Madison was first reported by President Woodrow Wilson, who said he saw the ghost of a woman in a cap and shawl and believed it to be Dolly Madison standing in the Rose Garden. Also during the Wilson administration, staff members were preparing to move the Rose Garden when reportedly the ghost of Dolly Madison swooped down from the sky and chased them off. They then decided to leave the Rose Garden where Dolly wanted it. The wife of President Woodrow Wilson, Ellen Wilson, is said to haunt the White House's Rose Room. 
The ghost of Ellen Wilson was first reported by President Truman, who said that he saw the ghost of a woman standing by a window in the Rose Room. Truman believed it to be the ghost of Ellen Wilson, who died in the White House during her husband's presidency. These are just a few examples of the many paranormal encounters that have been reported at the White House. While some may dismiss these stories as mere legend or folklore, the fact remains that many presidents and their guests have claimed to have seen and heard things that cannot easily be explained. Whether or not you believe in the paranormal, there is no denying that the White House remains a place of mystery and intrigue, and the stories of the presidents and their encounters with the paranormal only add to their mystique. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you've had a wonderful time. Have a great night, and don't let the ghost bugs bite. Bye. <laughs>